Hey everyone, for the last part of my series on the VRT software, I'm going to be choosing a challenge in the VRT simulation software, and I'm going to be going through each step of the design process, showing you how to build a robot, uh, program it, and then use it to solve the problem in the VRT, so you see what each step of the process is like. Here we are back in the Virtual Robotics Toolkit and this is going to be the final video in my series here. And we're really going to be taking everything that we learned in the past videos in the series and we're going to be putting it all together as I walk you through step by step how I solve the cleanup challenge. And so I have the cleanup environment open, I have my custom robot here, and the first thing I want to do is show you how I designed my robot. Now this robot is capable of completing this challenge in about five and a half seconds. That's the fastest time that I've managed to get so far. Um, in the front here you'll see that there's a very large plow. I mean if you look at the robot really all it is is just a gigantic wall on wheels. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, so there's a very large wall in the front to push the debris out of the way. I have an ultrasonic sensor on the bottom there that enables the robot to sweep around and see the debris with its eyes so instead of just kind of blindly hunting around it can more efficiently spot the debris and drive directly to it now if we look at the back behind this wall here we have color sensors and there is one on each side so these color sensors purpose is to see the white border on the field so the robot can prevent itself from driving straight off of the arena um, instead, it, the color sensors will see the white border, tell the robot to stop, and then the robot will reverse and turn around. The robot has two drive motors, each controlling its own medium truck wheel, and so that gives it a really simple tank style of driving. And in the back, we have a caster wheel here. And that's just the third point that the robot balances on. So I'm going to start the simulation and just drive the robot around using the keys, and you see just it's just very simple tank driving and it can plow into this tower here knock it down and push all the debris off so now I'm going to go and show you the programming of the robot which is the other major aspect of what I've done here so here's the program that I've made for my custom cleanup robot and it's fairly simple but really only as sophisticated as it needs to be all of this occurs inside its own infinite loop so at the beginning here the robot is going to be set to kind of turn itself around a point so it's making a slow pivot turn to the left and as it's doing that it's going to be looking for debris with this ultrasonic sensor so it keeps pivoting around and around when it finally sees the debris it's going to break out of this loop and it's going to drive forward at 45 percent power to push the debris that it's seen off of the edge now 45 percent power seems kind of low but this is done on purpose so it can move the entire tower as a, an entire unit and push all of the blocks of debris off at once because I found if you go higher than 45 percent power what it ends up happening is it crashes into the tower at too much force and topples it and it makes a mess and it takes longer for the debris to clean up and you'll see this in action in just a few minutes when I demonstrate it then we have this switch case right here which all this is doing is checking both color sensors on the right and on the left behind the giant plow shield wall whatever you may call it um, and these sensors like I mentioned before are looking out for the white border on the edge of the arena and if they see any white at all it's going to break out of this loop and it's going to bring the robot to this string of code here where it stops the drive motors reverses the robot turns it around and repeats the process to look for more debris so that's how this uh, cleanup robot program works. Uh, pretty simple, but very effective. Okay, so I think we've done enough yapping for now. You've seen how I've designed my robot, how I've built it, and how I've programmed it. So now I'm going to show you the robot in action. I'm going to pull up the EV3 menu, turn the EV3 on. I have my custom cleanup robot program loaded already. I'm going to start the program and then start simulation and let's see how we do. Let's pull up the scoreboard so we can see the time. Here we go. Up. Oh. And we see that the uh, tower actually toppled this time. 
uh, as opposed to being pushed over as a unit. So it's going to take quite a bit longer for the robot to clean up. But we, we're already down to one block. So let's get rid of this last block here. And that took about 23 seconds. Now let's do it again. And I want to show you what happens when you do it multiple times. Now you see this time, the tower didn't quite fall as a unit like it normally did. But yet again, you see that the blocks actually fell differently from the way they did last time. And that just goes to show that the makers of this software programmed in a degree of randomness, which is really nice. Even if you start the same program on the same robot in the same orientation, you're going to get slightly different results each time. So I want to try this one more time, and let's see if we can get them pushed off all at once so I can get my five and a half second record. Yep, there we go. 5.6 seconds. Tales of your legendary cleaning skills will be told for generations to come. <laughs> One thing I really like about this software is that uh, the programmers who worked on this had an interesting sense of humor, and they filled the software with little jokes like that, which I really appreciate. Anyway, that's how I solve the cleanup challenge in 5.6 seconds. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. The Virtual Robotics Toolkit, or VRT, is a computer simulation software made by a company called Cognation Robotics that allows you to build and program your very own robot and go through all of the steps of prototyping a robot without ever needing a physical one. If you would like to learn more about this software, please click the link and go to my website and I'll have a full written description of the software and a link on where you could purchase the software as well as get a discount. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.